indeed a pleasure to be here at uh, Queen's College Chapel uh, once again. And uh, I would thank your provost, uh, Alex, for the invitation. Uh, always, always a pleasure. My association with Queen's College goes back a long ways. In 1967, I was one of the first uh, residents to stay in Field Hall. As a matter of fact, the uh, plaster wasn't even dry yet <laughs> on, the, uh, on the walls, and uh, Canon Earl was there to welcome us in, in September of 1967. And over the years, I have, have enjoyed a uh, wonderful relationship uh, with Queens and uh, with, with people, uh, both faculty and, and uh, students uh, here at the college. This is indeed the week of prayer for Christian unity. And I want for us to think about these words as we reflect on this very important week in the life of the Christian church. They are from Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. We know that rock is such a strong image for us here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Our province is sometimes called, affectionately I think, the Rock. And once again, we are invited during, during this week of prayer for Christian unity to reflect on the common places, those places which are the solid rock that all of our faith traditions hold in common. I grew up in Dunville, out in Placentia Bay, and if anybody knows that area, you know it's predominantly a Roman Catholic area, Placentia, but uh, my dad moved there to work with the Americans in Argentia, and moved my mom and I over from Brigus when I was about six months old. So my faith was nurtured within that little community. First of all, nurtured by my family, by my parents, who took us to church and uh, made sure that we had a solid foundation. Now I suspect each one of you here were also given guidance by, by parents uh, as a, a, a rock, a solid place for your faith. But it's not always that way today. We cannot uh, assume that people today, in fact, uh, were, uh, were introduced to a faith tradition by parents, because many people today just are not churched. But I was fortunate. Another place, a solid rock for my faith, was within the little United Church out there in Dunville, and also a Baptist church. The Americans built a church in Dunville, and uh, they were from all over the United States. So someone tells me that there are about 1,000 Baptist, different Baptist uh, traditions in the United States. So they, they have many different ways of doing things. All you need is a small crowd and they can split off and, and form another tradition. So that little church in Dunville actually had people from all over the United States, so they had many traditions uh, coming together. There was one pastor there for a while, and uh, he was from New York City. His name was Pastor Dan Dreyer. And he was very interested in young people very interested in young people. And each year they would have a uh, youth week. And during that week, the young people could shadow someone within the church. You might shadow the superintendent of the Sunday school, the treasurer of the church, you might shadow a Sunday school teacher. 
I shadowed Pastor Dan Dreyer for that week and uh, was able to go on visits with him to people's homes, was able to visit the hospital with him, was able to spend some time with him as he prepared for, for worship. At the end of the week, at 14 years of age, I was invited to deliver the sermon. And uh, you can imagine at 14, well, we're kind of foolish though, at that age. We will take on anything <laughs> quite often when, <laughs> thank goodness for those teenage years. And I went into it with great uh, passion. I still remember the text, take up your cross and follow me. And not many texts have stayed with me, but, but that one has. And it became part of that solid rock again being within a, a youth group there at, at that church. And uh, the nurture in my own little United Church and uh, that little Baptist church. Now, many of my friends were Anglican in, in the community. Many were Roman Catholic. And it came time for, for early education that went to Grace United Elementary School. So all of the Anglicans in the United in those days went to uh, this uh, little uh, United Church Elementary School. And then for high school, went to St. Mark's, Anglican, and uh, received a, a very fine education uh, in, in both of those schools. I wanted to join the CLB with my friend, Bill Nosery. He was telling me all about the CLB. But I, I had a great disappointment. I wasn't able to join the CLB in those days because I was United Church. Thank God things have changed. I had other friends who uh, were in the Scout movement. So I thought, well, maybe I'll join the Boy Scouts. I had another great disappointment. You had to be Roman Catholic in those days <laughs> to, to be part of the scouting movement, which is hard to believe today. So I, I wasn't able to be part of that group. So, so thank God for that little uh, interdenominational group that they had there at that third Baptist church where all comers were, were welcome. And I think that's one of the solid rocks that we are building on today that in fact we are, we are being much more inclusive of people from other denominations. Now we did have two little uh, groups within the United Church. One was called Tyro and the other was called Sigma C. Of course there were only United Church boys in those groups. So we've, we've come a long ways uh, uh, in that, uh, from that uh, tradition. Solid rocks for our faith. The scripture readings today are excellent for the week of prayer for Christian unity. The, the few verses just before those read in Colossians are in fact uh, introducing the cosmic Christ of Colossians. And uh, one of the theologians that we studied at the Atlantic School of Theology when I was there uh, was T.R. de Chardin. And Thierry de Chardin lifted up the cosmic Christ of Colossians. And we know that uh, Christ was there before even the world itself, before the solid rock on which we stand, this rock in which we live. Christ was there even before that rock. But Paul named that Christ and our belief in Christ is indeed the central place where all of us as Christians have a solid rock on which to stand and we are able to build on that rock. We have some very positive things happening in connection with uh, um, the week of prayer for Christian unity. Yesterday at the Health Science Center, there was a worship service 
and it was acknowledging a new venture in pastoral care here in our hospitals. For many years, I was advocating that we should really be uh, sharing resources for pastoral care. I had worked at Queen Street Mental Health Center in Toronto, at St. Mike's Hospital in Toronto, and uh, pastoral care was delivered by people from all different traditions, and, and when you were on call, you were covering for everyone on that particular night. Here for many years, we have had the luxury of having individual chaplains for our faith traditions. But that is starting to change. Yesterday, at the Health Science Center, a three-month venture in sheer ecumenical chaplaincy for emergency on call was endorsed by the heads of the churches for a one-year experiment where the first call is one night would be a, uh, an Anglican chaplain and that Anglican chaplain will take calls for everyone who may need pastoral care within the Health Science Center, the Miller Center, St. Clair's, the prison. The next night, whoever's on call has to be in a church on call Tuesday nights, and again, that person will be the first responder to all calls. And most people are very accepting of the chaplain who will be there for them. In the midst of a crisis, people are not looking for the denominational badge that one might be wearing. They are looking for a person who, of faith, who has a belief in Christ, who has skills in delivering pastoral and spiritual care. If an individual needed and insisted on seeing somebody from their own tradition, then another call will be made. But they are finding, as I have known for many years, very few people say they want to have somebody from their own faith tradition. So that is a, another way where we indeed are doing this week the prayer for Christian unity. Sharing our resources and building on that solid rock. For many years down in Churchill Falls, the United Church and the Anglican Church have been sharing resources and the minister, the rector uh, in that uh, parish. And uh, currently, uh, the minister is an Anglican person and uh, she's been there a number of years, but it's, it's, it's again a shared ministry within our province. I believe that we are going to have to look at more of these shared ministries throughout the province as resources become, uh, human resources become uh, much less within all of our churches. And I believe we can do that. It happens in other places in, in Canada and uh, we can certainly do it here. In you, O oh Lord, I seek refuge. Be a rock of refuge to me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. 